Hey, hey, it's Wednesday. It's 8 o'clock on the East Coast. That means it's time for this week of Gear Report, where we talk about all the things that have been published on Gear Report since last week and uh, talk about what's coming up. This one's going to be real heavy on what's coming up. Yo, yo, yo to you as well, Flying Rich. It uh, looks like I may be solo tonight. TJ, who is normally my partner in crime for this uh, segment, uh, is stuck at work. So, um, you know, he's we're, we're going to return the favor to him next week. And uh, it's going to be the TJ show because I will be in New Mexico starting a... Uh, Starting a big backpacking trip. Hey, Joe's here. Good to what? see you, man. Welcome to the program. What's going on, Jeff? Oh, you are, dude. So uh. we call this This Week at Gear Report. And typically what we do on this show is we review everything that has been published since the prior week. And now we have had weeks where that has been like reviewing 15 different articles. Um, I think this week... Let me see, second of June. We may, we may actually have one. No, I think we talked about that one last week. I don't think anything's been published since last week. So it's going to be more talking about some stuff that has recently shown up in the queue to review and talking about the big events we have going on here. Since you've joined us, we can talk about what you have going on. And I haven't got feedback from you yet from the Iraq veteran 8888 shoot because obviously – we bumped into each other there yeah. several times. <laughs> yeah, it was, and I got the, the, the drill bits out, so I, I am oh, a full that. man again. Wow. All right. That's good to hear. Yeah. So uh, typically, we kind of just chit-chat and kill time for the first couple minutes, give time for people to show up. During this portion of the program, that's when I ask you, the folks out there in the audience, if you have joined us, please consider leaving a comment. Let us know you're there. Here's what a comment looks like. Boom. It's simple. If Fly and Rich can do it, you can do it too. So um, leave a comment. Ask any questions you have. Um, interact. This is intended to be an interactive show. And so the other thing you can do that's going to help get more people in here so we have a lively discussion is uh, we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Uh, whichever platform you're on, give us a thumbs up or a like or whatever or a dislike, or a thumbs down, whatever. I, I don't really care. Some interactivity would be nice because that will help feed the algorithm to get uh, more people notified that we're live so we can get them in and have an even more interesting discussion. So anyhow, that's, that's the standard behind-the-scenes stuff. I'm Jeff. I'll be your host for the evening. And uh, Joe, why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself and why you're here and all that jazz. Awesome. Well, my name is Joe. I run the uh, Shooting Gallery New England YouTube channel slash TikTok page, and uh, I love guns. If you can't tell, I'm a gunsmith by trade, so uh, I work in the industry. I started my channel because I kind of wanted to get – that. I found my passion very early on, and guns were my passion, so I wanted to start my YouTube channel to make it as like a digital platform or a digital resume, then I just – started just meeting a bunch of people like flying rich in the comments, just a bunch of people. And I just fell in love and I, I have so much fun doing it. I get to talk to some of the coolest people in the world. And I really enjoy uh, making content that is not just like, Oh, this is, this, this is a gun. This is what it is. This is how much it is. I kind of just like to show my journey or I do a lot of gunsmithing content as well. Cause when I started really getting into it, I didn't, there wasn't a lot out there. There wasn't a lot of, well, there was, but it's more, I like to think of it as a first time gun buyer or a first time like builder as such. I do a lot of AR work on my channel and I want to convey to my viewers that, Hey, this is how easy it's going to be. This is what you're going to run into. Be prepared for this. Kind of, it's kind of like an outside looking in type aspect. And uh, so I just kind of fell in love. I started working at a, a gun store about a year and a half ago. Uh, and Well, not a year and a half ago. It's nine months ago, actually. And uh, I love going to work every day. So I'm hoping eventually one day to work more in the industry at a manufacturer or 
got to do this full time if I was if I'm lucky enough to. But uh, I'm here tonight because you and I have been talking. I think we when we met at Iraq Veteran, I expressed that I did want to tend my hand into a little bit of journalism sure. on the two way side, and uh, so I was. I'm, that's why I'm here. I'm here to hang. Yeah, cool, and I appreciate it. Definitely. Great to have you here. And, you know, that's a great segue to talk about um, a gear report, uh, like the top right menu item on the homepage. It says uh, right for gear report. If you click that link, it'll take you to a page that describes a, a few of the different ways that we work with people. So um, Joe does mainly video content. We've got a number of people like Clover Tech and... Um, Ghost Tactical and um, Kelly at Armed and Feminine and, you know, a few other people like that that are primarily YouTube channels. And they're looking for an opportunity to do something written just to kind of try something different and diversify their content. And it's pretty cool when you do a review or you do a project, you know, you're building a building out a gun or something and you shoot a video for it. And then you can use like that same project and then write about it. And it's a completely different piece of content. So it, it gives you some really neat uh, opportunities there. Um, but you mentioned journalism. So we typically do gear reviews. But you know what? If you wanna if you wanna take it in a in the direction of gear reviews of projects, we love do-it-yourself projects or you know, guns to flight projects, whatever. Um uh but also, if people want to get into some 2A advocacy and, and write some opinion pieces or whatever, hey, as long as it's well written and, uh, you know, it, it uh, speaks to, to our audience, then sure, we'll publish that. So for all the folks out there, you know, we got a lot of opportunities for folks to, to come and uh, use Gear Report as a means to get exposure to a different audience and try some new things and... Uh, and be a part of a bigger team because uh, I know personally when Gear Report started, it was just me. <laughs> That's so good. Um, yeah, I think you sold me on that, Rich. I'm not going to argue with you. Um, but uh, you know, when I started Gear Report, it was just me. And, and you know, there were times a few years into it, I, I had many times where I was like, man, it's just too much. It's, uh, being out there by yourself, doing everything, you know, uh, alone doesn't really compare to being a part of a team. And, and even if you're, you have your own thing and you can come be a part of a team every now and then that can really help mentally, or at least that's what I found personally. Um, it made it a whole lot easier on the days when it's hard and things aren't going right. And you want to just say, well, screw it. This just isn't worth it. You know, you, you be a part of the team and, and that'll help you out as well. So yeah. yeah, we got a lot of opportunities in, in different areas. Um, you want to give us a little teaser on uh, what you're working on? So I have two things. One, I already have a video on my channel uh, on this, but it's more of getting the word out. Uh, disclaimer, I am a brand ambassador for this company. I did buy this on my own volition, but I'm on my first one is going to be on the Eclipse Holsters Cyrus Holster. This is their light-bearing uh in the waistband model. Um, Clips also is a great company. They have an amazing warranty. Uh, they're very space oriented. Uh, they're, like, that's like the motif they want to go with. But um, I first originally, this one has the uh, Deadpool riding a unicorn print. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I'm a huge comic book. How could you not get that? Uh, yeah, like you can't. And I got a magic mag carry, which I'm not really a big fan of. But, um, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be working on this for my first piece just to see like how I can actually how how my gear report would be trying to like kind of figure out what it's gonna do. But uh, I love it. Um, I wish I did. I had it cut. I, I had it made for a Glock 19, and it's the light is a old light PL Valkyrie Pro. Um, not a fan. Uh, blew up in my pants. Uh, unfortunately, Ooh. so I have to upgrade. I'm uh, I'm looking to upgrade and get a different light. I just I don't trust the old light uh, weapon light now, just because I had that incident. Like I, I mean, hey, things happen, but at the same time, the way it happened, if I was in another situation, it could have gone really bad. Yeah. So uh, and you said O light. On. So it's funny you mentioned O light because I got an email this morning. They they reached out to me. O light reaches out often. 
and most of the time I kind of ignore them because they annoy me. But <laughs> I've had I've had really good luck with their lights. I haven't had any issues with one. I had, and it's it's a love hate thing. Like yeah, I like their products. I hate the way they do business. Their marketing. And I've is, never is so enjoyed. Impressive. I've never enjoyed working with them. I've gotten some really cool lights that I like from them, but I've never enjoyed working with them. And they've got the Warrior Mini Two, a little EDC light that they want to get in someone's hands to review. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You're you're yeah. making me wonder. But you know <laughs> what? I'll what I'll do is I'll offer it up to the team and say, hey, is anyone looking to anyone interested in this? And if someone speaks up, I'll send their name over and introduce them to Olight, and they can send it directly to the writer and get it done. Yeah, I have their S2R baton. I used that for a long time for, as my EDC light, and I actually really like that light. The brightness was really cool. Um, my, my only complaint about it was the was the pocket clip. It came off way too easily. Uh, it, it was a great light. I I. I like how it's magnetic. I use it at work. I keep it to one of my rolling carts. So I'm on the mill. I'm trying to get the right depth when I'm pinning and welding a muzzle brake. Um, I get. I can see it's just that perfect amount of light that you need. Uh, just the weapon light. I. It, it just it soured me a little bit. But I got yeah. that going on, and then I just got. Uh, I can show this because it's not an actual firearm, but that Iraq veteran. 80% uh, arms were there, so they sent me their GST9 uh, frame and jig. So I'm going to be – that's going to be my pretty much first Polymer 80 that I'll, I'll uh, do a video, and I'll do – I'm going to probably write an article on it as well. I uh, just kind of documented my journey on it because I – with 80 Polymer 80s, I live in Massachusetts, for those who are listening and here and wondering. So Massachusetts, I call it Masganistan. It's behind the Iron Curtain, so we're un under con constant scrutiny. So – I always have to, you know, triple and double check my, my rear end. I don't want anything to ever happen. So Palmer 80s, I've always been like, hmm, is it worth it? But the the good thing about Palmer 80s, it's one way you can get Glock, uh, you can get Glock type mags or Glock type pistols in because mm -hmm. of our handgun roster and it's less of a bother uh so those those are two things i'm gonna, I'm gonna be working on uh the i'm gonna try and get the article written this weekend actually for the holster and then i'm gonna start doing some video work and checking out the gst9 i shot it at iraq veteran and i actually really like the grip like the grip angle and uh David over there at 80 percent arms was talking to me and i was just like well my whole thing is how does it fit with like regular holsters like does it change it at all? And he had a couple like a &R design, tier one, conceal, all, all the different holsters. He's like, try them out. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And uh, they we reached out and um, he, he was uh, nice enough to send me one out. You know, my such a small channel. Uh, I, I welcome anybody that wants to work with me. So, sure. So um, that's interesting. And, uh, I'll be interested to see the take of someone who is a trained gunsmith on putting together the polymer 80 because some of the people, Oh my goodness. Some of the, some of the pictures and videos you see, it's uh, it's scary. Um, so I'll be very interested to see what your feedback on that is uh, from, from uh, less of the hobbyist and more of the professional perspective as well. Yeah, when I was in college, one of our labs, we had to uh, do something like with the Dremel tool. So I'm thinking, oh, Polymer 80. I can build a Polymer 80. My first attempt, and I got the original Gen 1 Polymer 80. So it was the Spectre. It wasn't like the P80s that you see now. Like you actually had to have like a milling jig. Mm -hmm. And I, I was, I, I, I jacked that thing up so bad. I threw it away. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm all set. It's I got I still got an A in the class because it showed I know how to use a Dremel tool, but I all set. Gotcha. And, uh, this is it, it, from what I'm looking at. And the jig I will say is very well made. It's not all plastic. The There's jig was coat. impressive. I'm going to ask him for a jig because um, we we got a Ghost Gunner a couple years ago. We got the Ghost Gunner two, and we had some issues with it, and said. Uh, you know, we can write the review the way with, with, with it, the way it is with the issues we have, or, you know, they, they were just coming out with the ghost gunner three said, you know, would you rather we send this one back 
they were like, well, let's troubleshoot it. And I said, well, you got a new one out. Do you really want to troubleshoot the old one? Or do you want to, we'll just send this back. You send us the three and we'll complete the review with the three. I mean, why do a review on the two when the three's out? They, oh yeah, it's a good idea. So we sent back the two. It's been over a year and we haven't got the three. And I'm sitting on a stack of, uh, I'm sitting on a stack of AR-15 and AR-10 and AR-9 <laughs> lowers. Some of them from some of them from 80%, uh, the, the one you just showed, I'm pretty sure some are from them. And I think, you know, they were kind of ticked at me, but I'm like, Hey, what am I supposed to do? You didn't send a jig. We were going to put, do these in the ghost gunner, but it's chewing them up and, and mangling them. So they're not usable. We can't go forward with this project. We're stuck just sitting on these until they send us a new one and they never send us a new one. Yeah. So, Maybe you can get a jig from them and then we can finish them up. That'd be kind of awesome. I, I think that's the direction we're going to go. Yeah. So, um, and then, so, so the other thing I was going to mention is I alluded to that, the, and you mentioned going to school, you know, as a trained gunsmith, um, I, I'm anxious to see content in general, not just the polymer 80 stuff, but um, I think there are a lot of working gunsmiths that are like, why would I show people how to do this? you know, when I can charge them for it. And, and I appreciate the folks who do document things and share knowledge. And I think you help people to be more safe. And that's, you know, how, how could that ever be a bad thing? Helping people to be more safe, you know? So that's how, I that's appreciate how I you sharing that. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Cause you know, I was, when I was really getting in, you know, I'm, I'm a millennial technically by definition. So I, I like the ARs and built in, you know, adult Legos and, uh, I, I want to learn. I like working on my guns. And even if I didn't have the schooling and, and I did, you know, for those who are wondering, I, I graduated from Sonoran Desert Institute with an associate's degree. Um, so I got the schooling, but at the same time, I love watching tutorials on how to swap out triggers, sights, like what to look out for if I'm building an AR-15 with this. Like it, it, I geek out over that stuff. And there's probably millions of people like me that you know their regular gunsmith is just going to talk down not talk down to them but say oh no i'll take care of it it's too difficult for someone who doesn't have the training i'm telling you right now half the time i get stuff in my shop that granted i i had the passion for it so like i wanted to learn mm -hmm. but most people you can generally do a lot of the stuff that you have your gunsmith do uh by just watching a YouTube video. So, and, and that's the thing. I feel bad because like Apex, for an example, Apex has their whole channel on how to install pretty much everything they make. I do Apex triggers probably four times a week. Hmm. And it's just, you know, people not, or just not comfortable pushing the pins out or what have you. So it, and that's what I try and help people understand that you can, you're not going to break anything. <laughs> Just push the pins out. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Flying Rich can 3D print the jigs. That is awesome. I'm all about 3D printing. Dude, did you guys see, because Flying Rich was there at the Iraq veteran shoot also. Did you guys yeah. see, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Van. Vin. Uh, yeah, Vin. yeah, he was on. Yep. I met him. I didn't, I'm not a 3d printing guy. I don't understand mm -hmm. it. And so mm -hmm. to me, it's like, it's like Latin to me. So I saw what he had. Some of his designs were actually pretty cool. Like he had like oh, yeah. a, like an old, the like scorpion. scorpion. Yeah, yeah. That thing was cool. And then he had the revolver space gun thing built off a of, uh, heritage. <laughs> that was cool. He was actually on, um, Hank Stranger's show. Like I think it was last night. And I was, I was listening yeah. and almost they started talking about like, software and stuff like that i just my brain was just like i don't get that. right so i, <laughs> I, well, I need to catch up with him um i said hey um where are you publishing this stuff oh i am um, i he, he talked about some forums or whatever i said why don't you come publish some stuff on gear report this is a great you know i would love to support um the effort to to really kind of democratize firearms and get them out there in people's hands where it's not up to the government to say what we can have or not you know um i think that's a great thing for for you know any second amendment supporter to to support 3d printing and um oh yeah that'd be good i gave him my card he didn't have one to give me 
and uh, and he hadn't reached out to me. So if anyone knows Vin, have him have him reach out because I'm I'm dying to give him a platform to share some of his work and help get the word out there. Um, I'll send you my design. That's awesome. And dude, uh, I I've been wanting to get a 3D printer. Uh, I've got enough friends with 3D printers that I can kind of get stuff done if I need it. But um, it was like the vinyl cutter. I got that and I've done shirts. I've done decals. Um, I actually got it for the Sea Scouts that I work with so we could cut decals for all their boats. And we saved a ton of money by doing that. But it takes so much time. And, and like today, um, I picked up some guitars over the weekend that I'm going to refinish. And I got a company sent me um ah that's awesome good thanks rich we'll we'll definitely let's see if we can get vin on here to document and share some of his stuff i'd, I'd love to help him with get the word out um but like a company offered i'm in an amazon reviewer program where yep. we've got probably 30 40 000 products they have they have millions of products so it's not anything on amazon that i can request for review but like 30 40 000 products that i can go in each day and request four or five different things and they send it to review well i requested yesterday and it showed up today an airbrushing kit it's a little Ooh. air compressor yeah and the hose and little paint cups and this this wand whatever they call it and I, I debated, like I sat on that for an hour, like, yeah, I don't know. Do I really want to request that or not? Because it'll be cool. I'll be able to do some neat stuff with it. And I figure I can paint some guns too. Oh you know, yeah. I can, I can use my vinyl cutter to cut the little templates and then airbrush around them to do camo patterns and stuff. Oh, I can yeah. airbrush on the guitars to do some finish work on that. I mean, there are a whole bunch of things I can do with it that will be cool, but it's another learning curve and another set of equipment to maintain. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But anyhow, that's my I think my step back with uh, 3D printing is I'm not a I'm not a software person. I'm not really a computer person. I'm lucky that I know how to work the uh, <laughs> uh, editing software that I that I use. Yeah. And I'm when it comes to stuff like that, I my brain just goes like it shuts off. Yeah, I, guess. I just I don't understand. So it's a it's a, it's a learning curve. So yep. That's why I never really got into you know a lot, a lot of stuff, and this is going to be you know a definite curve for me, you know, writing and stuff like that because I was never the best English student or uh, mm. writing student in high school. So uh, thank God Grammarly is still exists, and that's kind of what got me through college. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to suggest that too. That, that's what I tell all the writers. I can tell the ones who don't use it because I open the article up and Grammarly goes and red underlines everything, and I'm like, oh. They didn't use it. <laughs> the, one that did, the editing's easy because it, it catches all that stuff. All right. So let's see. I'll show you showed something that you're going to review soon. I'll show you some stuff that came in today. Uh, so when was it? It was the end of January. It was the end of January that TJ and I went down to South Florida, um, down, down by Fort Myers, to an event called the Fire Expo. And uh, then the very next, that was on one weekend. The next weekend, we went and met with the Fab Defense and a, and a couple other brands. Their marketing team was having their annual retreat in Daytona Beach. They had like this fancy Airbnb place. We went and spent the night with them, had dinner, drinks, hung out with them, got up the next morning. You know, we got all their products out and we're playing with them safely they were in the ammo there you know it's not like we're drinking and playing with guns you know but they had not, well they've got a night vision company they have optics they have all kind of different brands that they work with uh, bags and shooting um shooting bags and carry bags and a barrel company and and uh, all kind of stuff um well some of the stuff from fab defense just came in so this is something that i will be starting to review when i get back from the backpacking trip the FX spike, they call it. Oh, um, and this is that. a pretty cool little bipod that, um, all right, let me get on the camera right here, that expands out. Uh, you know what? Let me change the format. So I've got a wider screen here. There we go. So you see the short leg and the long leg there. And it uh, pivots. It reminds me of, uh, oh, what's that other one that I have? Uh, and it's not within arm's reach atlas or something i don't remember i've had one for a couple years 
that is uh, pretty big and heavy duty and metal. This has got the plastic legs and uh, it's got a, a little knurled knob here. So you control the pivot side to side and the rocking, um, you know, on that axis as well. So um, I'm really interested to throw this on a rifle and check that out. So that's yeah. something that will be upcoming. I've been and, looking to uh, actually grab one of those because uh, my first rifle I ever built on the channel was a 20-inch DMR. Uh, it was a fixed mag receiver, and I kind of built it as like a like a DMR, so I have a fixed A2 stock and stuff like that. And I was like, huh, I should get a bipod and check this out. Now I'm thinking already, like, because Fab Defense, I will have to say, has some of the coolest stuff. Their stocks they have yeah. are pretty interesting. I'm not a big fan of their pistol grips, but – yeah, some of their stuff. I, I I I look at theirs. I'm like, all right, I could do that on this, and you know, change, tweak it a little bit this way. They, they got some good stuff. What's neat about them to me is uh, they get a lot of pushback from some people because their stuff seems a little gimmicky. But pretty much everything they make was requested. It's an uh, Israeli-based company. Just about everything that Fab Defense makes was requested by someone in the Israeli military, generally like a special ops unit that's looking to do some secret squirrel crap and they need <laughs> something designed for it. And then they make it and, and people dog them for it. Like, Oh, pff, who's ever going to use that? And I'm like, I don't know. I could see where it'd be useful. Um, this doesn't really fall into that. Um, the FRBS folding backup sites. So that's something I just got a, um, a Maxim defense, PDX and 300 Blackout. It's an SBR. And um, I haven't started doing the review because they're supposed to have a can with it and they hadn't sent the can yet. So I, I don't want to go burn the ammo that they sent and then find out that, oh, now the can shows up. But I'll probably, I'll put these on it, these um, backup, uh, I was going to call them iron sights. They're polymer. Yeah. But um, pretty, pretty cool little, little backup sights. And I will not put the stock on it because it's an SBR with a, with a little PDW brace on it. But this GL core is uh, uh, a pretty snazzy little um, collapsible stock with a um, quick detach sling mount and a little rubber pad on the back to give a little bit of traction and grip and, and maybe a touch of padding and ergonomics wise i i really like that so so i asked i said you know what if you want to send some stuff send me some fde and these couple different items and i'm going to pimp out one of the ars with all this stuff I'm, i don't know which one but something else that i thought looked cheesy and then when i tried it and got my hands on it i was like whoa wait a second this actually feels really good this uh, ptk m combo is um they call it a rubberized angled grip combo. And so you end up with, I wonder if I can get this close enough people can see it. Yeah. So you get your angled grip up on the front, but then this little piece here sits out on the side. Um, so you've got, uh, you got your angled grip and then uh, was, I think you, your thumb goes on that or something. And the feeling of control Instead of just grabbing on, it gives you something to kind of push against. Like what do they call it on the pistols The where they'll have the, the little gas lever or whatever they call it up on the side, the, the little push down. It is not gas like a gas gun. I'm blanking on what it's called now. But it gives you like a positive thing to, to kind of index against. Oh, yeah. To, um, to give you a little bit better grip. Uh, I said I, I call them accelerator pads for some reason. Yeah, um, um, oh, what not, are they called? Vin. It was the um, the table I was at when I was talking to Vin that had them. They had the aluminum Glock Gen Three lowers instead of being polymer lowers. They were all aluminum, and they had that little cut up at the front that you put your thumb oh, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gas pedals. I call them gas. They're gas. Yeah, pedals. gas pedal. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So, and it, this isn't like a gas pedal for an AR but it's similar in function and it gives you something to kind of push up against to index on the side. Whereas the angle grips on the bottom, it gives you something up on the side to index against. And these are rubberized kind of like Hogue coated stuff. Uh, I don't think it's Hogue branded, but you know, that type of rubberized 
yep. and uh, feels really nice. So I'm, I'm getting anxious on those. Um, let's see what else. So that is, we've talked all gun stuff so far. Um, I'm about to disappear for a couple weeks. So next week on Wednesday, I don't know if I'll be here or not. TJ is going to run the show for a couple weeks. And, um, uh, because I'm going on the big uh, backpacking trip. So I'll fly out to New Mexico next Wednesday. Um, we should be landed. And I just don't know if I'm going to be at some place where I'll have. Um, I, I don't think my phone gets good enough coverage anywhere out there to do to to get into the show with just cellular. But if we're if we're at the hotel where I have Wi-Fi or something and I can log in, maybe I'll log in then. The, but then Friday we hit the trail and we'll be on the trail for 11 or 12 days. I won't have a phone with me. No, st I'll be completely off the grid for that whole time. And then when I come back, I'll be updating a bunch of backpacking and, uh, uh you know, it, it's going to be a couple weeks of just doing backpacking content and then catching up with all the other things. Cause I've still got videos from Iraq veteran that I haven't had time to edit and from the gathering before that, man, I'm so far behind on everything. And then I'm about to go away for a couple of weeks. So, yeah. Same, same with me. I got like a couple, I got like the videos edited and then I got some other stuff, projects I've been working on. So I have all that. I probably had probably four weeks of videos just. Oh yeah. Either ready to edit, ready to publish, tweaking a little bit here or there. It just, yeah, I got, I got my, I work two jobs on top of the channel and I have a second channel. So mm. finding time plus, you know, me and my wife, you know, we do a lot of stuff with our, you know, our social life. Now where we live, everything kind of opened back up. So the bars nice. opened up. So I went back to bouncing and then I realized the bar I work at is kind of dangerous because I love, they have a huge craft beer. Uh, selection and I'm, I, as you can tell, I'm a fiend for craft beer. Uh, and uh, so I've been hanging out there for a little bit. I'm like, I gotta get some editing done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. So sometimes a little, uh, little drink you drink while you're working isn't bad, but other times it's like, oh yeah, now I'm not getting anything done. So you got to balance yep. that definitely. So, so anyhow, that's what you can expect here on gear report coming up is I'm going to try to schedule some stuff to post like today. I'll be honest. I'm getting ready for that trip next week. And two of my kids are working at a scout camp this summer. They're going to be lifeguards at, at the waterfront of the scout camp. And they leave on Friday to report to camp for the summer. So they're scrambling to get everything ready. I spent most of the day today, um, out hiking to get ready for my backpacking trip or helping them get stuff ready to go to camp on Friday. So once I get <laughs> no. them off to camp, then I have to get all my stuff ready for the trip next week. I'm hoping I can get all that done in time to then spend a day churning out and pre-scheduling content so that something posts while I'm gone, because if not, it's going to be pretty slim pickings on gear report while I'm gone <laughs> and then a flood of content when I get back. So I'm, I'm going to try to get some of that done. Um, yeah. What are you going to be uh, backpacking? So uh, I've worked with scouts for years, and um, where, where we're going, it's called Philmont Scout Ranch. It's one of the Boy Scouts of America high adventure bases. So um, I went a couple years ago with my son. In 2017, we went and did um, – think that trek was scheduled for about 80 miles and you usually do 30 40 percent more with all the other stuff that you do out on the trail so we 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 figured we did about 100 miles through the mountains in new mexico up and down on that trek this one should be a little bit shorter i think we'll probably top out at about 80 or 85 total over the course of you know, 11 days out on the trail so it's going to be a lot of backpacking and we'll do some like black powder shooting and horseback riding and spar pole climbing, some old lumberjack type stuff. Ooh, We've got man. a bunch of different activities we're going to do while we're out there. Um, so basically each day you hike to a new location and set up camp. About half of those camps, they call them staffed camps where they have program. The program is like one of them is set up 
to be, it's like a lumber, it's like an old school 1800s lumber yard, lumber operation, a timber company. And the people who work there are like in character from the time. And they show you how they would do everything back then. Um, and then the next day you go to the old Western town and they go, you go do cowboy action shooting or black powder shooting. And, you know, the next day you hike to the old mine and you actually go down in an old mine from back then. And it's, it's an amazing place and super cool. Um, I wish I had that when I was in the scouts. <laughs> yeah. 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 I went way back. I went back in 90 and then I went in 2017. And now this time I run a Facebook group to, that supports people going to this camp. Um, uh, Philmont Trek Talk is, is what we call the group. And through that, I got invited to go with uh, with a crew from a couple hours away. So, uh, so this will be a different one for me. I'm not going, I went with my dad and brother the first time with my son the last time. I, I don't know anyone on this one. Like I met <laughs> them and I've hiked with them two or three times in, in prep hikes. That's it. I don't know anything about them. So. Um, That's cool. This, this would be an interesting, a different perspective for me and lots of hiking. And, you know, I broke my foot at the at the gathering at the media event two months ago. So what? I haven't been able to get out and do all the hiking to really get my body in shape for this. So I've been doing that this week, getting up early and going out and putting a few miles in with the backpack and trying to get ramped up for that. What but, type of backpack are you running? My backpack is, it's by Z-Pax. It's a, a Dyneema Cuban fiber um, pack. They call it the Arc Blast. And it's, it's a, I think it qualifies as an ultralight backpack. I mean, the whole thing weighs about 20 ounces. And, uh, yeah, I, I go pretty hard on trying to make everything not bare bones ultralight but pretty close to it because like i've had five knee surgeries and i've got a herniated disc and bad shoulders and if i carry too much weight i'm going to break down on the trail and they're going to have to come you know rescue me so <laughs> i carry everything as light as i, I can you. so that uh to try to stave off injury while i'm out there so uh but you know to that question we got a whole section a gear report we we would talk mo mainly about guns tonight we've got a backpacking section we got a military vehicle section like i have done nothing to my humvee in over a month <laughs> because i was when my foot was broken i was sitting in my office trying to stay off my foot and that's when i got into doing all the guitar stuff so i've got you know yeah. the roll of guitars back here and um, trying to learn how to play them. And I, I just picked up a couple, like this Flying V is a train wreck. It needs to be completely taken apart and a bunch of stuff sanded and um, fit together properly. And then, you know, holes filled and redrilled properly and put together the right way. And I, I got another one that that I mean, I paid next to nothing for them, but the neck had been broken off and it was put back together in an incredibly poor fashion. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get that apart and fix it um, or just strip the strip the uh, parts out of it. It's got three hundred dollars worth of uh, active pickups in it. I may just strip those out and sell them and say, screw it to the rest of it. Because uh, I don't. You got a them. very good. Uh, you got a very good ZZ top five going on with the those guitars. All I, all I can think of is yeah. uh, Sharp yeah. Press Man when I'm looking up the guitars. Yeah. You yeah, see, so the funny thing is, I was telling TJ uh, we we did an interview on Monday, and during that broadcast, after the broadcast, he said something about this one, and I said, you know what? Honestly, I probably got forty dollars in that guitar. The pickups in it were like three hundred dollars. So the guy. I could just pull the pickups out and sell them. And I've made, I bought three guitars for the guy for 180 bucks. I could sell these pickups for 200 easy. And then it's paid for all three of them. Um, Cause I got that one, the one I just showed you and this one, which is pretty, it looks pretty cool. Only the bottom yeah. two are hooked up. That top pickup isn't even hooked up. I mean, it looks like a hardcore smash metal, guitar with the three pickups but the top one isn't even hooked up but this one actually plays and sounds pretty decent it's got uh the wrong tuners in it i'm gonna have to fix that but otherwise it's actually a decent guitar so i may keep that one 
sand it down, use the airbrush to re you know get everything yeah, just right, like refinish it, make it look nice. This one, I really just wanted it to hang on the wall because I think it looks cool in the background. Yeah. Um, I will get it fixed so it works right. What? Ghost Tactical is here? What up, Ghost? Oh. All right. Welcome, Ghost. Yeah, I didn't see him sneak in. I was here yapping about other stuff. But uh, but that's part of... See, this is this is what happens when I broke my foot and I couldn't get... I couldn't go work on the Humvee because I didn't want to be standing on it and walking around. I needed something I could do in my office and without ammo and going to the shooting range, gun stuff wasn't going to work. I said, you know what? I got a couple guitars. I'm going to learn how to play them. And the next thing you know, I've got 15 guitars and uh, four amps. And I'm like, you know what? I, th I think I have a problem, but, <laughs> but I'm writing gu guitar content too. And interesting thing at the end of the Iraq vet event uh, on the way out, I stopped and was talking to Eric and he had a camo hat that said Fender across it. Fender, the big guitar company. I said, dude, I've been wanting to ask you all weekend. I didn't want to distract because you were so busy. Now the event's over. You got to tell me what's up with the Fender on your hat. He's like, what do you mean? Like, well, I have had guitars for years. I actually have been trying to learn how to play them and writing a little bit of guitar content. And I saw that and I was like a camo hat with Fender. There's got to be a story there. And he's like, dude, seriously? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Seriously? He's like, you know, I have a guitar channel, right? Like 20,000 subscribers. And he's not, it's not big like his gun channel, but guitar signal is what it's called. Yeah. Good like, channel. I didn't know that. So I went, went and watched it. Dude can play Eric getting bad on a guitar. And yeah. I've watched a little bit of his reviews and I like the approach that he takes. It's just like his gun reviews. You know, he takes the same approach to that equipment, which is different than the way most guitar reviewers do things. So he actually asked if he could write some stuff for gear report and he hasn't oh, yet, cool. but, but when I get back from the backpacking trip, I'm going to, we're going to find a time late summer, early fall. I'm going to go spend a week with him and we'll play with all his guitar stuff for a week and maybe take his boat out and do some fishing. And I don't know what oh, else. I would love that. I, I, I'll have to say, I, I, I've been, I watched Eric for years before I even started my channel and now being a content creator and going to Iraq veteran, that was, I, I say it next to my wedding was the best weekend I've ever had uh, me and flying hanging out we were the squadron we we, we roll heavy as uh if, if the running joke is as a t-shirt on it uh but i met eric and at first I, I i almost i was like oh shit what do i do oh no no i don't know if i can swear i'm sorry <laughs> and i'm like uh what do i do and richard was flying rich was like dude just go introduce yourself and i was like he's a regular dude like wow, yeah. And yeah. He he actually said like, dude, you know, we should get you down here, you know, shoot some fun stuff. And I'm like, that was so huge that he like was like, yeah, yeah. come on down, we'll you know do some content. I, I'd love to do that. Plus, he's I know he's a big fisherman, me same as me. I, uh -huh. My dad, me and my dad, uh, he grew up. I grew up just going fish with my dad every single weekend. So I haven't done that much because I you know later years I've been a workaholic, but my yeah. Yeah. That's like a second pass sign next to shooting is fishing. Well, it's funny. The first shot show that I went to, the 2016, 2017, I don't remember, four or five years ago, whatever, I saw him in the media room and was like, whoa, because he was my favorite gun tuber at the time, you know. Um, and now I'm at a point where I don't watch anyone. Like, I'm so busy with my own stuff. I don't have time to watch anyone. Um the only people that I watch pretty much are people who are a part of your report. I'll watch, <laughs> I'll watch Clover. I'll watch uh, rogue Banshee. Sometimes um, I'll watch um, Jeremy and Kim with the down South out uh, off road and outdoor. Cause yep. you know, we do that stuff too. Um, if it, if the person is not a part of your report, I generally don't have time to watch. So. <laughs> um, but anyhow, I, that was my one kind of geek out fanboy moment was a few days into shot show him and Curtis and, and Chad Curtis. I can't remember what Curtis is, does now. He has a channel. VSO, VSO yeah. That, that Curtis, they were sitting at the table 
I was like, dude, can I get a picture? And I handed the camera to Curtis. Dude, can you take the picture? He was on one side. Chad and Eric were on the other side of the table. I said, hey, hey, can I hand you the camera? I'll go stand with them, take a picture. I got that picture and I posted. I was happy as could be. They were super nice. And then a couple of days later, we were in a, an Uber or taxi or, or something together coming back from uh, one of the private shooting events. And that's when um, Brandy was like, hey, give me your information. We'll invite you down when we do our media event. And I was like, holy crap. These are like the big dogs and they're like nice and talking to me. Yeah. And that, and that's, that was that, my whole that's when I really figured out that um, there are very few kind of bigger name people in the industry that I've run across that weren't like super nice people. You know, like I'm trying yeah. to think. I'm not a Yankee fan. I have I've met Yankee. He's nice enough in person, but his on air persona is a little too douchey. It's he's too intentionally douchey for me in yeah. person. I've never had a problem with him. He's like a really nice, cool guy in person. I don't like who he is when the camera gets turned on. Um, but aside from that, you know, I'm trying to think of anyone that I didn't like who wasn't a nice person. I'm struggling. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a it was also eye opening for me. It's just like you know, I'm from Mass, so like there's a special persona you like you get from the North, and the just the open arms I felt when I was down in Georgia with everybody, you know, like it, it was just like I, I gotta get the hell out. I want to move. I want to move down south and you know yeah. just be around just nice people, you know. And it, yep. that, that's what I got from Range Day and just meeting a ton of cool people and. I was supposed to hang it out at the Mean Arms booth. They had some cool stuff. I, I really enjoyed the uppers. Who'd you say? Coming. Mean Arms. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, they got some really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, Ghost and Clover, I think both have done some stuff with them. I think um, Ghost has probably done a little bit more. Uh, I think they met them at the last SHOT Show and got some product from them to do some reviews. And it, it's pretty cool that they're – they're taking an innovative approach to solving some problems, um, you know, like adapting uh, nine millimeter carbines to, yeah. to regular lowers, that kind of thing. They're, they're taking a little different approach than some other companies. So, yeah. Anyhow, yeah, was, we have rambled tonight. Normally, normally we do in segments um, what's been published, what's going to be published, and then kind of the generic shit shooting. We've just kind of wandered all over the place on this one. Um so anything else you want to talk about before we kind of start wrapping things up? Uh, uh, dude, honestly, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm really excited for the opportunity. So I'm, I'm hoping I can, when, after the, once that first article gets posted and we'll see the, you know, I'll see how it's received. Sure. Then uh, I think it's just, I'm going to do as much content as I can for you guys. And I, again, I really yeah, appreciate, appreciate the opportunity. It. Yeah, and no time pressure here, but you know, understand that I turn into a pumpkin to probably mid evening on Tuesday. So if it's something over like Sunday or Monday, I can look at it, and maybe get it posted before I leave. But otherwise, ain't gonna happen until uh, a week or three into July once I get back and decompress and get caught up on other stuff. Oh yeah, I understand. I'll try. I'll try and get it done by Sunday evening if just, yeah. if, if I can. Yeah. Yeah. And again, no pressure, but uh, I appreciate that's it. just how my schedule happens to be right now. All right. Um, if anyone out there has any more comments or questions, it is last call. Now is the time to post them very rapidly post haste in the comments. And uh, let's see, uh, upcoming things to talk about. TJ is going to be running things the next couple of weeks. I highly encourage anyone out there, Please join him. Be active. Ask questions. TJ hasn't run the show, but once or twice before. So um, be nice to him. Help him out. You know, be be interactive and ask questions. That'll be great, folks. Um, let's see. And I, th I think I had something else, but I lost it. So I think that's going to be it for now. So with no further questions in the comments, let's all thank Joe for coming by. Go check out. Um, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell him. You tell him where do they check you out and what kind of stuff should they expect to see on your channel? Uh, well, you can check me out on TikTok and 
YouTube, primarily YouTube. TikTok is just something I've been getting really into. Got a really good following over there. But you can check me out, Shooting Gallery NE. Um, also on Instagram, Facebook, Rumble, Odyssey, all anywhere you can have video platform. That's where you'll find me. Uh, you can expect to see a lot of stuff coming down uh, the pipeline at the moment. I got a few AR stuff coming. Uh, we got the 80% GST9 build coming. That will be video and there's going to be an article on gearreport.com and uh if you like gun stuff you like gunsmithing uh finding out what part works good for your ar check me out on youtube and uh get the conversation going uh, i'm always as responsive as evenly possible <laughs> to anybody that asks questions so um awesome well thanks again for being here everyone go check out joe and give him a like and subscribe and all that good stuff for now, we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Thanks, everyone. If you have uh, squandered 50 minutes and 36 seconds, seconds of your life with us, thank you. We appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you at the range.